in Oklahoma. Hey, thank you. Uh, Josh, I, I want to ask, like, uh, it seemed like from the beginning of your story that you were kind of this fearless, you know, young person kind of pursuing things at, um, and not really maybe thinking about, oh, what if this fails or whatever? Um, my question is, with all that's happened up until now, how has that experience or those experience changed your relationship to fear? I love this question. So the first tattoo I ever got, I don't know if you can see it, it says fear is a thought and thoughts can be changed. The way my perspective on fear has evolved is one, any negative emotion, whatever it is, we should embrace it. We should feel it. We should express it. I learned that trying to suppress and like just push down and compartmentalize all of my negative emotions, my insecurities was a coping mechanism that allowed me to be me at that, that age that was you know crucial, but it also created a lot of havoc. And so I'm in the mindset that maybe a lot of the stress that I was creating myself by trying to run away and deny my reality, but not, uh, not expressing my emotions or feeling my emotions and, you know, trying to run away from them is what caused a lot of my decline in health. So with my relationship with fear, how it's evolved is that I've now understood that it's, it's a, what I believe it's a trigger of a thought. So I guess the best way I can share this in my perspective is an acronym that is T E A R thoughts, emotions, actions, results, or I'd say reality. So with our thoughts, depending, we can start anywhere on that, that, you know, spectrum, but typically we start with our thoughts. And if we're thinking something negative, we're going to have a negative emotion. That's a consequence of how our brain operates and the emotions it creates, the chemicals it creates, that's going to inspire us to act one way or another consciously or unconsciously, largely it's unconscious, then that's going to create a certain result that's going to make up our reality in our lives. So with BMX, I was, I had the fortune of being, you know, 12, 13 in action sports and my amygdala not being so conditioned by certain things outside of just like primal fear instincts that I just embraced it. I just, I didn't really assess fear at that time. It was just something I did. As I got older, I started to observe and reflect back at those times where I was like, oh, fear was actually a big part of my life. And I learned how to leverage fear. And that's what I'm super thankful about with BMX because it allowed me, I wasn't aware of this at the time, like I am now, and I practice this. But back then it was just like, I was just so focused on redirecting my thoughts because I get a new emotion. So I wanna try this trick and I would catch myself thinking about, oh, I saw this person try it before they got hurt. Maybe I tried it before and I got hurt or I fell and I'd feel the fear and it would prevent me from maybe not committing to the trick fully, which would result in a, a, cra or a, yeah, a crash and an injury. Or what I started doing was, what do I want? Well, I want to do this backflip. Okay, well, what's it going to take? Maybe I need to go try on the foam pit a bunch. Maybe I need to commit to it. So it was just about redirecting the emotion. And it starts with acknowledging the thoughts. And when you can change those thoughts, you can practice that on a regular basis. I started to realize, oh, I can feel differently. And so how it shows up for me today is fear to me is just a signal. And it's a signal in a couple different ways. And there's a book, you know, I think Ryan Holiday is the author of The, the Obstacle is the Way. And it's usually a signal of like, that's the very thing we need to do and we need to embrace. But at the same time, it's there to protect us. What I've learned is a lot of what we're trying to be protected from is created by society. It's a lot of these uh, conditions that, or it's a lot of conditioning that we take on from other people's bullshit. And I've learned a lot of that about myself and how much I was living at the effect of other people's opinions and perceptions that I had. So really for me, what fear is, is just an emotion that's a piece of information. And when I can feel any emotion, whether it's fear or it's guilt or shame or anger, I ask myself, or I try to be conscious of like, what thoughts are here? Why am I feeling this? And I feel a lot of that in business today. It's very foreign to me. I've been, you know, I've been in business full time for four years now with what I do, but I'm learning. There's a lot of shit I don't know. And I'm trying to do that. And that's putting myself out there and doing these things. I feel the fear, but I have to do it. I have to overcome it because of what's on the other side. So it's just a matter of redirecting my attention and my focus on what do I want? Okay, what do I need to do? And if I feel fear or any negative emotion, all right, well, let's sit with it. Let's see what information is coming from this. And maybe yes, I need to develop this skill. I need more practice in this. Maybe that's what it's telling me. Or maybe it's telling me that I'm in the wrong relationship. I talk to my wife about that all the time. Being in you know, toxic relations in the past created a lot of negativity for me and a lot of negative emotions. So that's a lot. But I guess the premise of this is understanding, my belief is understanding that fears is a thought. 
And when I can change the thought, I can get a new emotional experience. I'll show up differently and I'll create a different experience called a reality for my, me and my life. Thank you. My pleasure. Incredible. Uh, 